Welcome to iLecture Online. You may notice that this is the very same problem we did on the previous video, but we're going to solve it in a different way. In the previous video, we realized we did not know the distance to town, and so therefore we started with the equation distance 1 equals distance 2, and then we replaced it by solving this equation for distance, and we can say that distance is equal to velocity times time, so therefore we wrote v1 t1 equals v2 t2. So that was one approach. But we can also say that we do not know the time. We don't know how long it took to get to town and how long it took to get back, but we do know the difference between them. We know that the time to get back took one hour longer than the time to go to town, so we can use that as a starting equation. So instead of using the method we used in the previous video, we're going to use a different method for the very same problem. We can write that t2 is equal to t1 plus 1. Now, we can solve this equation right here for time, and if we do that, we get time is equal to distance over velocity. So therefore, this equation cannot be written since, of course, we don't know what the time is, so we need to eliminate the time. We can now write it in terms of distance 2 over velocity 2 is equal to distance 1 over velocity 1 plus 1. And then you say, well, wait a minute, we don't know distance. That is true, but we do know that the two distances are the same. So what we can say is that this is simply equal to d. And so when we then rewrite this equation as d over v2 equals d over v1 plus 1, then notice in this case there's only one unknown d because v2 and v1 are known. Let's plug those values in. So we get d over v2, which is the velocity going back, that's 36, equals d over the velocity going to town, which is 45, plus 1. And then the only thing we need to do to solve that is find the lowest common denominator. Hmm, how do we find the lowest common denominator? Well, our method is as follows. We take 36, we divide it by 2 because it's even, that gives us 18, divided by 2, that gives us 9, and then divide by 3, we get 3. In other words, 36 is equal to 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. And then we do the same for 45. 45, since that is not even, we can divide by 2, but we can divide by 3. That gives us 15, which is still divisible by 3, which gives us 5. So therefore, 45 is equal to 3 times 3 times 5. And then we circle all the prime numbers that occur the most. We have 2 times 2, so 2 occurs twice here. 3 here occurs twice. It occurs twice again there, but we don't have to repeat. And we have the number 5 once, which means that the LCD, the lowest common denominator, is equal to 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 5. 2 times 2 is 4, times 5 is 20, times 9 is 180. Our lowest common denominator is 180, which means I'm going to multiply the left side by 180, and I'm going to multiply the right side by 180. So here I can say that 36 goes into 180 5 times. That means I get 5d is equal to 45 goes into 180 4 times, so I get 4d, and here I have 1 times 180 plus 180. Coming over here to continue the problem, I move the 4d to the left side, so I have 5d minus 4d is equal to 180, or d equals 180. And the distance is equal to distance 1 and distance 2, the distance to get to town, and so it means that the distance is 180 miles. As you can see, there's a second perfectly valid method to solve the same problem. In this case, assuming we don't know the time, it's not just an assumption that was true, we didn't know the time, but we knew the relationship between the time, and then we started with that equation, and that is how it's done.